In a recent interview for The Telegraph, Worcester Bosch Managing Director Mr. Von Girajakoba said the following. Heat pumps do not make sense in older properties without extensive insulation. Low temperature heating requires well insulated properties, requires space, as well as properties that are adequate around heat pumps. He also pointed out that the least suitable type of property is a Victorian terrace. I'm today at a Victorian terrace where I did install a heat pump in October last year, and we are here to prove Worcester Bosch Managing Director Mr. Von Girajakoba wrong. When it comes to space, there are certain considerations we need to take into the account. The unit should be installed one meter away from the boundary under permitted development. If you install in closer to the boundary, you will have to apply for planning, which might be costly and might take time. For certain units, such as this one, that use propane as a refrigerant, uh, we also have what is called a protective zone. Any doors or windows below the level of the unit need to be at least one meter away. And the third consideration is noise. So the distance from your neighboring windows or habitable rooms needs to be around as a general rule of thumb between four or maybe five meters depending how noisy the unit is. And by the way, this unit is on now. The background noise is, is noisier than the unit itself. There's no problem at this job to have it located far away from a neighboring window so it does pass the sound assessment. So yes, it is true that external space for the external unit is a consideration, but it definitely is not impossible to install those units at terraced properties and we do it regularly. When it comes to inside, you obviously need space for the hot water cylinder if you don't have one already. I don't think it's such a big deal though, because most Victorian terraced houses are around 100 to 120 square meters, and you need around one square meter or 10 square feet for the internal kit. That means that you have to sacrifice around 1% of your property. To me, it doesn't sound like such a big deal, but you tell me if it is. Therefore, I don't think Mr. Von Girajakoba's argument about space stands. A bit of planning, a bit of careful consideration, and it's absolutely possible to have air source heat pumps installed at terraced Victorian properties. So according to Worcester Bosch Managing Director, Mr. Rajakoba, heat pump has no chances working in a house that's not extensively insulated. This particular house has no external insulation whatsoever or internal insulation to external walls. All walls are double solid brick walls. Windows are just standard UPVC double glazing. I think it's in a really old front door that's a bit drafty. Kitchen door, again, just UPVC door with the cut flap that's probably drafty as well. Floors are suspended timber floors as you would expect in Victorian properties that are also uninsulated. So it is an uninsulated drafty house that only has some levels of insulation to the loft. I want you to make a guess now. What is the coefficient of performance of this unit? I want you to leave a comment below and have a guess. Also, I want you to guess what was the running cost of the heat pump in January this year. We will answer all those questions later on in the video, so keep watching. But before that, let's talk to Dan and Tina about their experience with the heat pump so far. Hi Dan, good to see you again. Hello Shimon, nice, to, nice to see you too. How has the winter been with the heat pump first year? Yeah, fab, brilliant. It's been very warm, um, very comfortable. Yeah. No one has been cold in the winter? Nobody cold, no, no, no. we've got uh, two young kids. They've been snuggly all winter. My wife was a bit skeptical, should we say, about um, getting the, the heat pump installed in large part because she was worried that we wouldn't, it wouldn't be warm enough in the house and that we wouldn't have hot water and none of that's been an issue. Um, yeah, I guess there's a bit of an adjustment moving from condensing boiler where you've got immediate hot water to a water cylinder. It's, you can it's, make it's, a switch, you can get adjusted to it, right? Yeah, it's not a big deal. You can, you can figure it out, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of skepticism out there about this uh, new technology, right? And well, relatively new, but um, yeah, it's, it's worked incredibly well and yeah. Okay, so because that's, that's a Victorian terraced house, right? With no insulation to the walls whatsoever. Yes, and No exactly. insulation to the floors, drafty floors, probably drafty doors. The windows are probably decent, right? UPVC windows, so that's okay. -ish. Yeah, the UPVC double glazing, like previous owners put in, I think they're pretty decent. But yeah, everything else you said, no external wall insulation, no internal wall insulation, no underfloor insulation, loft insulation, yes, but you know, it's it's not a massive amount. 
Um, so really, that's 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 it. That's all we got. To run it efficient, you have to install ra large radiators, and there's just one right there behind. Yeah, you. there is. So yeah, they, yeah. they are. This is the trade-off, right? They are quite sizable. Some people don't like them. Yeah, they are quite sizable. I mean, in our case, we had very old radiators, and some of them we didn't have one in this position here, but like in other parts of the house, um, very old, outdated that we kind of needed to update anyway. So we've got some data for the running cost. Let's assume uh, kilowatt hours now at average prices, let's say electricity at 34 pence or 35 pence and gas at 11 or 12, because I think that's rough ballpark, right? Sure. So in January in previous years, you would have used 2,800 kilowatt hours of gas mm -hmm. for heating and cooking. That's roughly 300 pounds spent in one month on a gas boiler, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, the tariffs have been moving all over the place, right? So it's, it's kind of difficult to keep track and wait, but, but, but yes. 11 pence. Yeah, it's about sat that. down and figured it out. Yeah. That, sounds about, that sounds about right, yeah. And in, in usually without a heat pump, your energy consumption in electrical consumption is about two, 200 kilowatt hours per month? Yes, roughly, yeah, yeah, yeah. And in month of January this year, you were 699 kilowatt hours, 700 yes. kilowatt hours. The unit in January used 500 yeah. kilowatt hours of electricity. Yeah at 35 pence a unit that gets us to what, 175 pounds, right? Yeah, yeah. So at the same, at the current rates, that unit seems to be about 125 pounds cheaper. Yes, yes, exactly. I mean, I think on current tariffs, we would, we're probably saving <clears throat> maybe around sort of like 100 quid mm -hmm. a month on heating over the winter. But ultimately, we're, we're really, really happy that we chose to go down this route and it's working fantastically well. And yeah, it's it's cheaper as well. After going through the first winter with the heat pump, yeah. what do you think? Um, it's really good. I'm actually glad we did it. We switched the system because um, we saved money and it's reliable. Like the house is always warm, water's no issue at all. Yeah. What about bigger radiators? They Actually are bigger. Like them. Yeah. You like them? Yeah, I like them. A lot them. of people don't like them. No, I like them because uh, I think we picked nice ones as well. <laughs> it's I, I kind of at the beginning I thought, oh gosh, we have to have other radiators or maybe bigger ones, but they're not all bigger. Some of them are smaller. And I actually do like the ones with the pipes. I think they actually do look nice, especially in the living room. I like that one. Oh no, I'm really glad then that the heat pump's working for you and that you are convinced now. That's yeah. good to hear. No, it's, uh, you've done a great job, so we're happy. And now it's time to see how efficient a heat pump is in an uninsulated Victorian terraced house. And in April, the efficiency of this setup is 4.6, which means one unit of electricity provided 4.6 units of heating to the property, and there's no gas boiler that can beat that figure in terms of running costs right now or efficiency obviously but let's see the total coefficient of performance since the unit was installed and the total working figure for this unit is 4.1 which means one unit of electricity consumed by uh, the heat pump provided 4.1 units of usable heat for a house which is an excellent result and way above the average in the industry right now, I think average is around three right now. So as you can see, heat pumps not only work in Victorian properties, they work really well, they are cheaper to run than the gas boilers, but they require careful design, careful installation. And maybe this is what Worcester Bosch management doesn't understand, that the systems can be installed well and designed well. All you have to do, you have to design the system so that heat emitters meet the heat load of the property at a low temperature. And if your heat loss is larger, if you, if you have an uninsulated property, it simply means larger radiators or slightly higher flow temperature. And if you want to understand how to design those things, Heat Geek Heating Mastery course is the best resource for uh, those things. I'm gonna leave a link Below. If you are a consumer who's interested in a heat pump installation, head to HeatGeek YouTube channel where you will learn a lot of good information about air source heat pumps.